Hello today crew and welcome back to, I'm going to call him the genius, <laughs> all right? Now in 10 years, well actually it's a lot longer than 10 years, it's my whole life in fact, I've never witnessed someone with the skill that Zach has. So everybody, this is Zach. Zach, Hello, guys. can you tell everybody why you're a genius please? I brake with my left and accelerate with my right. There you go, so Zach's in an automatic car and you can do this in a manual car. Zach has the skill which most race car drivers have and use of using the left foot to brake. Now we had a chat with a few other instructors, yeah. didn't we? <laughs> we did. We did. And we just had a, a chat with Stiggy, in fact. Yeah, all right, so we'll Stig. call him Stig, right? <laughs> and what did Stig have to say about the left foot braking? Shouldn't be doing it. He's you not happy like with it, it nope, is he? No. Now we've done a bit more research. We've done Google research. We've actually informed or asked other instructors with audit qualifications and gone to Carlington and etc and they have said as long as Zach keeps control of the vehicle then it is acceptable for the driving test yeah so Zach has a choice he can either continue the way he feels comfortable with left foot braking yes. as far as I'm Which aware am, yeah okay so I would encourage Zach to, to continue to do what is comfortable and actually Zach is in full control of the vehicle so I don't have any safety concerns with this um, or he could completely change and adapt, maybe just using the right foot for braking and accelerating. But I think we're going to keep... Keep to the left, yeah. Okay, definitely. cool. All right, Zach's on his mock test now. Um, Zach has got quite a lot of skills, but I'm not going to do the talking now. Zach, what's your history of driving? What, Where have you come so, from? Um, what have you done? I drove a bit when I was younger. Uh, yeah, did some silly things and yeah, ended okay. up losing it. And then went to Dubai for five years, worked out there and was driving there for a few years over there and then came back uh, to the UK and just never really thought it was worth driving yet. Where I was working in the city and now with a family and that, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's about time now to get on the roads. Cool, all right, sounds good to me. Okay, Zach, so if you're all right, we're gonna get started. Yes, um, so Zach hasn't had a mock test ever before. This is completely new to him and there's obviously added pressure because he's on camera. So if we can give Zach a little bit of grace here, we're gonna go through the formalities of what exactly a driving test consists of because this hasn't been yes. explained to Zach before. So when you meet the examiner, they okay. will now ask you to sign a bit of paper with your own pen from new restrictions. You'll keep the pen, you'll keep the paper. Okay. After that's happened, the examiner most likely you ask, ask you to read a number plate. So could you read the number plate of the vehicle in front for yeah, me? It's KJ. 1.6 ACU. Very nice, and that's roughly 20 meters, which is the requirements for the eyesight okay. test. Then you'll be asked a tell me question. So I'm gonna ask you a tell me question here. One that was on the theory test, so it may still be in your memory. Um, probably not, as most people completely mm. forget the theory test after myself, in, well, maybe not, because I had to read it like a Bible. Like a <laughs> yeah, and um, would you be able to tell me what's the road legal tie requirements, please? Uh, 1.6 millimeters depth with no abrasions and no tears. Nice, good answer, okay. Um, and then you'll be asked to get into the vehicle okay. and the examiner normally tells you that you'll be driving for roughly 45 minutes, you'll be doing a reverse exercise at some point, you'll be doing roughly 20 minutes of independent driving and possibly a controlled stop, which okay. used to be called emergency stop. Are you happy with that explanation of the yep. driving test? All good. good, because that's what you'll probably hear. <laughs> All right. Yep. Now we've got the engine started, so you yes. don't need to do any of that. All I want you to is to do is to drive on. And often when you start your driving test, you will be using the sat nav. You've got okay. like a four out of five tests are using sat nav, so an 80% chance of using the sat nav. And sometimes, quite common at the test center that you'll be using that that starts straight away. Okay. So now what I'm gonna ask you to do is to drive on and follow the sat nav please. So we're okay. gonna start your independent driving from the beginning. Okay, fine. When you're ready. Oh, sorry, I almost forget it's this. All, right. all good points will be up here in green. <laughs> all amber or advisory faults, driver faults will be up here in yellow. And all serious or dangerous driver faults. In the red. In the red, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now when you're ready, please drive on and follow the sat nav. Thank you. Welcome back to Two Day Pass, and if you're new to the channel, an extra special welcome to you. Now, we have today an extra special diamond in the rough here, the genius Zach himself behind the driver wheel. And look at this left foot braking. Amazing. Now, Zach is self-trained, and in 10 years of 
being a driving instructor, over 10 years of being a driving instructor, and my entire life, as I said earlier, I have never firsthand witnessed anybody braking with their left foot. This is a qualification that most race car drivers, in fact, all race car drivers, as far as I'm aware, will use to become a more skillful driver. Now, my colleagues and research that me and Zach have done in order to make sure that this is okay for his driving test have all suggested against using the left foot for braking. However, Zach goes against the grain and it's really nice to see somebody like this, which is under full control of the vehicle, extra safe driver, plenty of skills here from this person. Bring this qualification through into driving and pass his real driving test. The day after filming this mock test where he receives two driver faults, he also receives two driver faults on his real driving test. In fact, Zach and the examiner tried to play a practical joke on me and acted like he didn't even pass. Zach, could you pull over and stop in a safe place on the left here, please? Now Zach's pulling over to stop on the left, he has excellent speed and excellent steering. I compare this to an airplane landing at an airport. Very smooth, slow and gradual as we get closer to the curb. Thank you. Just secure the car. I just want to move this a bit, that's all. It's just a bit of a reflection on the windscreen. Try and avoid that so you can see more clearly. And batteries do die quick, don't they? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, I'm just going to put this down here, out the way. Okay, so, can you still see the sat nav yeah, okay? still good. Alright, lovely. Okay, when you're ready and it's safe, I'd like to continue and drive on and follow the sat nav, please. Here Zach is doing his POM routine. This stands for prepare, observe, move. We must make sure we have the correct gear and biting point if we're in a manual car. Applying the indicator signaling, trafficating, depending on what you might call this, is always a good tip before observing, making sure it's completely safe. This is called effective observations before finally moving off. Now, Zach always follows routines and the next routine that we're going to do is mirrors, signal, position, speed, look. This is the same routine we use for all junctions. We'd like to check the mirrors according to which way we will signal and then apply the position of the vehicle depending on how many lanes and which lane you may need and then slowing the vehicle from a running to jogging to walking and sometimes coming to a stop as Zach will need to do here because we're approaching a busy high street and then finally making effective observations or look. This means we must look a minimum of right, left and right again. Zach is doing a peep and creep exercise here, which means he's moving out slowly, creeping and peeping. He's making eye contact with other road users and not slowing or stopping anybody as he makes progress to turn right. After 300 yards, go right on the roundabout and take the fourth exit, A404, Plin Road. To become a more advanced driver, adapt the driving technique as Zach is showing us here. Not the left foot braking, but checking all of the mirrors before moving away after stopping in traffic or at a traffic light. This way you will be more aware of filtering traffic like motorbikes or bicycles. So Zach, sometimes to break the silence you'll be asked this question. What would you normally be doing today if you weren't doing your driving test? Uh, probably slugging it out in the office. Alright. Good times. How about yourself? Same. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Always something to do. For my driving test, I pass second time. On the first try, my examiner asked me a similar question to what I just asked Zach. Something along the lines of, if you weren't doing a driving test today, what would you normally be doing? I wasn't as comfortable as Zach and engaged in a quite nervous and lengthy story. This distracted me from the road ahead. Had I been more focused 
and kept my answer short and sweet, then this would allow me to focus on the road ahead, giving me a better chance of passing my driving test first time. Very good. I'm just smiling at the left foot braking. It's a good time <laughs> to show it off in this slow moving <laughs> traffic. Making me nervous now. Don't do that. That's all right. It's all good. No, I'm yeah. After 100 yards, go right on the roundabout and take the fourth exit, A404, Pin Road. right on the roundabout and take the fourth exit. Stopping on a pedestrian crossing for considerable duration and obstructing the crossing from pedestrians can be considered an offence. It's an interesting sound you made there, Zach. Any reason? So I stopped in the zebra crossing. Hmm. However, on this occasion, it was not for a considerable duration and no pedestrians were obstructed from using the crossing. At Two Day Pass, it's competition time again, and every time the channel reaches another thousand subscribers, we will announce a winner for the free driving test competition. So for your chance to enter and win a free driving test booking, all you need to do is subscribe and write down in the comments below, free driving test. So do what you do and do what you do best, and subscribe and write down in the comments below, free driving test. Good luck. Okay, Zach, um, the sat-nav sometimes on driving tests can give us a little bit strange directions. Okay. If that happens, it be most likely that the examiner will tell you to disregard the sat-nav, okay. and that means don't listen to it. So I'm going to ask you to disregard the sat-nav just for the next couple of directions. I will give you direction because the sat-nav is going to tell you it's turning right and it's not, okay? Um, so just listen to me for now. I'll give you the directions, okay? So normally I'd turn it off and silence it so it wouldn't confuse you, but it can happen where it stays on on the driving test. So for that reason, I'll leave it on on this occasion. In fact, there will be a sign um, that will say Harrow Pinner. Okay. I'll ask you to have a look and see if you can read the sign and follow the sign instead. Signs can be used as independent driving for the driving test also. Okay. And that's the one in five chance you might be asked to do signs on the driving After test. After 300 yards, cross the roundabout and take the first exit, A404, then a green. So you can see the sign here on the left. I'd like to follow it to Harrow, Pinner, Stanmore. Okay. And just don't listen to the sat nav. Okay. Cross the roundabout and take the Excellent first observations for Zach as he approaches the first roundabout. This angle is quite hard to see at, and Zach is making effective observations to the right. The second roundabout, we also make effective observations. Sometimes people fail to see the road markings and fail to make the observations. Here, we have a driver fault for lane discipline as we just step over the line, dividing the two lanes and enter into the right lane slightly. This is an advisory driver fault as no other road users were affected on this occasion. To be honest, the directions weren't that bad from the sat-nav. I think I was overreacting a little <laughs> bit. 
it does sometimes give weird direction though, yeah. so I just was playing it safe yeah. just in case. You hear about those stories, don't you? People yeah, it does. Clip and everything. Yeah. And then um, people try to sue the companies that make the sound. Yeah. You've got to just keep looking for signs as well as using technology because, you know, technology. You can always trust it. Yeah. Yesterday, I took a road trip out to Nuneaton and Bletchley driving test centres. Before I made my journey, I made sure to program my sat-nav, as it's a long drive and I needed plenty of information along the way to help me, especially on the motorways where it's very difficult at high speeds to read signs and make sure that you use the correct lanes as early as possible. Go check out the channel I did a live on the motorway the other day so you can see exactly what I'm referring to. Now however, when I was using my sat-nav a long route, I was given directions to turn right into oncoming traffic at a dual carriageway. I immediately knew this was wrong and when looking at the road markings and the signs, we could see one-way arrows instructing me and ordering me in fact to turn left only. Had I had relied on the technology, I would most certainly be put into a very dangerous situation. So as a responsible road user and on our driving tests, it's very important to look for signs and road markings and obey them. Cross the roundabout and take the first exit. Let's zoom in on those road markings to see which lane we need to go ahead. So here we have the straight arrow and a nice open junction. That means there's no obstruction and the visibility is clear. We are at a roundabout and that means we must stop and give priority to the right. Because the open junction was so clear, we could see there was no traffic and Zach made good progress, not stopping as he knows it's safe and making progress to follow the road ahead. Often people receive minor driver faults or driver faults, stop saying minor Scott, uh, for undue hesitation. That's when people stop at roundabouts for no reason. Use your early vision, early decision when approaching a roundabout to make sure you know if it's safe to make progress. Yeah, I just tried to do it then. I don't know how people do it. Well, you know. It's doable, clearly, but. Maybe just not big foot. Well, you've trained yourself, <laughs> to do which it. is excellent. Yeah, for you to adapt to that left foot braking, I think it's quite a good achievement. I wish I had that skill. I don't, and it terrifies me like I've shared with you. <laughs> so I don't do it. Um, however, you've managed to do it. Race car drivers do it. You're not yeah. going to lose control. I've witnessed enough of your driving to know that you're a safe driver. So. Okay. For me, After and 300 yards, yeah, cross the roundabout and take the second exit, A410, Duxbridge Road. The next roundabout has two lanes on the approach and two lanes on the roundabout. It's very common for people to straight line the roundabout and not keep their lane discipline. This means we must stay within the lines. However, there's no lines on the roundabout, so how do we know we're in the left lane? Have a look at the crease that runs down the centre of the road, or keep yourself closer to the left, and this will maintain the left lane on the approach and throughout the roundabout. This is very important, as if we straight line it going over the centre line between the two lanes on the roundabout, we may receive a serious or dangerous driver fault, as if there was traffic in the lane next to us, we would cause it to slow, stop or swerve and commit one of the three S's which results in a serious driver fault. Have a look here as Zach maintains the left side throughout this next roundabout. This time we do have the white line showing us the divide between the left and the right hand lane. Notice Zach's steering here, it's very smooth and gentle and so is the speed which can help with accuracy. So if you're having difficulty maintaining lanes at roundabouts, I suggest approaching them slowly, and this will help you with your accuracy and judgment to make sure it's a safe time to join the roundabout, and therefore afterwards, you should be in the correct lane because you've got the time to steer and follow it until you reach your exit. Make sure you do your mirrors and signals accordingly for any other road users that may benefit.
take the exit, Courtney Avenue. Okay, Zach, um, if it's safe or when it's safe, yeah. um, uh, you know what, I asked this at an inappropriate time, so I'm going to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Just continue to follow the okay. sat nav, please. We'll do that later. It'll be your sharing question. Oh man, don't get me started, <laughs> please. I'll Just chase get it. Inside. Oh, so beautiful. After 200 yards, go right on the roundabout and take the third exit, Long Elms. Then take the second left. Go right on the roundabout and take the third exit, then take the second left. Let's hope Zach doesn't see this video because I think I'm developing a man crush. Now there's a couple of nice points coming up here. So we've got a good mirror signal position in the right hand lane, speed and look. Now look at the look here. This is a fine art. I'm going to slow it down. Definitely this dark blue car is crossing our path. And look at the two vehicles here, especially the white car. Look at the wheels, where the wheels are pointing. Look how quickly Zach noticed that. Doesn't waste any time and he's off. Excellent mirrors here and signal. And now another speed ramp, guys. Look at the steering. Zach's got his hands on the wheels. He's checked the mirrors and he's just allowing the steering to relax. And this is what I was talking about earlier, about keeping to the left, spiraling out as we exit the roundabout. Absolutely brilliant. Now remember, our sat-nav told us the second left. So we're going past this next one to the end of the road, which will be the second road on the left. After 200 yards, turn left, Headstone Lane. The sat -nav. That really scared me, that sat nav dead when she started talking. She's a scary lady. <laughs> Name's Gloria. Gloria, that's a scary name, so isn't it? <laughs> This next section of the driving test route involves a long left bend. This has a less C, less speed rule applied, which will increase your accuracy and control and maintain roughly a one meter gap from the pavement. Normally when people accelerate or maintain speed and steer left, this will decrease the gap and run the risk of getting too close to the pavement and this will result in a driving fault for clearance. Okay, Zach, that is the end of your independent drive, okay? I'll give you directions from now on. Okay, great. I'll just follow the road ahead for now. Thank you. Zach is looking ahead, assessing what to do about this white van on the left, deciding to move around it, and acting accordingly by checking the mirrors and making sure it's safe. Zach's very good at doing this and we'll see how he does it again. He's looking ahead, assessing the parked car here, deciding to go round and acting accordingly by checking the mirrors. This is called LADA. Look, assess, decide, act. And it's what we'd like to be doing when we're driving so that we're planning ahead effectively and making early decisions. Um, we'll be passing through a set of width restrictions shortly after there's a road on the right. Okay. So I'd like you to take the next road on the right. This is the hardest challenge for a width restriction. 
It's long and narrow and involves steering to keep the car an equal distance from both sides. There are definitely different methods to practice and I'm going to show you the technique now of a reference point. Notice the red dot on the front of the bonnet and how it's following along the yellow lines. You can use a reference point in your vehicle and maybe a driving instructor might help you align it to your position as everybody will have different reference points. Providing this reference point follows the yellow lines, we maintain a safe distance from both sides of the vehicle as we pass through the width restrictions. If you don't prefer to use reference points, then maybe attaching blind spot mirrors to the side of your vehicle can help you to see the position and your distance between the pavement and the left and right hand side of your vehicle. Choosing the technique that suits you best is important and I highly recommend you use one or two of the techniques to give you the most informative decision for the distance between your vehicle and the pavement. Zach, when it's safe, I'd like you to show me how you beep the horn. Thank you. We're just following the road. There's no need for your signal here. We're just following around, yeah. I'd like you to pull over in a convenient place on the left. That's perfect actually, if we just stop here. It's roughly about a car width Almost. between the two. Yeah? Right, even though the phone's on airplane mode, and it's not a handheld device technically because it's not sending or transmitting data, okay. I can't remember what the act was now. I wanted to quote the act for a second. <laughs> it's escaped my mind. I think it's 41D or something like that. Um, I'm gonna remove this, okay, because it's actually stopped recording anyways, but we've got your left foot breaking in, okay. so that's nice to share. Um, so I'm just gonna probably put this down there. Okay. That's all right, yeah. Let's yeah. make it flat so it doesn't move around. And I'm also gonna remove the sat nav because we've finished using that. And that just helps you to see a little bit more out the windscreen. Okay, now um, the next part of this test will be the U-turn. Okay. Zach has not done the U-turn before. Probably most of the people watching this video have more knowledge of the U-turn than <laughs> Zach because it's on a few of the videos. So this is part of a route um, okay. and it will be a little bit weird sounding but it's actually quite straightforward okay. in principle, okay? There was some space there earlier, so I'm gonna see if that space is still there, ask you to pull over and stop there, then explain in more detail the U-turn, okay. okay? So for now, when you're ready and it's safe, I'd just like you to drive on for me, please. Prizes go to everybody that remembers the POM routine. As you can see, Zach has already got that gear in place. You saw that. It's a little flick of the wrist there on the right side for us. Just puts us into drive. He's now flicked the left wrist, applied the signal to the right, making sure that everybody knows he's going to move off. Done effective observations and off we go, not wasting any time. Examiners don't want to see us look all the way through the six points taking too much time, by that time, you know, traffic has come along. What the examiners want to see is you're fully prepared, got the gear, got the signal applied, definitely if it benefits other road users. We do our effective observations, quick look over to left blind spot, right blind spot, through the mirrors as we go. We know it's clear and safe, and we're off. Zach's such a gentleman, huh? <laughs> trying to give me a smooth ride, huh? <laughs> I don't want to ruin your undercarriage. Oh, yeah, it's already ruined. <laughs> That's one thing actually I wanted to ask, because I've, I've heard a few people say. So see the, the speed bump that's in the middle of the road? Mm -hmm. Are you actually allowed to go down the middle one? If you're able to go on the left one? No. Okay, uh, yeah, that's what I thought, because a lot of people like, you can, then you can't, then you can. Uh, turning right, please. Shortly after you turn right, you'll see a grey car on the right. Just stop in front of that grey car for me, on the left. 
Um, don't worry about being perfect, just as long as there's ve uh, enough space for vehicles to pass, that's good enough. Just come in, in here, please, slowly. And just straighten up. That's fine, just stop us here. All right, thank you very much. So, um, this is where you would normally be given the directions to what we're going to do next, which okay. is the U-turn. I've got a little diagram here. Um, I'll show it, it's a bit embarrassing, but I'll show it to the camera shortly, but let's show Zach first. Currently, we're here. So this is what you can see out the window yeah. over here. Okay, so just people get an idea. This is what Zach's looking at. Yeah. And currently, we are here. And move out, go over and come round. Okay. So there we are, and we're gonna come out onto this half of the dual carriageway. Yeah. Once you're on this half, we're gonna approach a gap in the central reservation. There are no road markings in the central okay. reservation. So for anybody that's having lessons with an instructor in this area and they're being told to position in the middle or the right of the gap in the central reservation, I would like to say that's incorrect because there's no road markings. Okay. So as far as I'm aware, when there's no road markings, the safest position would be to keep to the left. Okay. That will allow people that want to turn also, space to turn also. So this is the section we keep on the okay. left of the gap in the central reservation. The second half of it. Correct, okay. yes. You can wait here if you need to, because you know there's oncoming traffic, and then when it's safe, we're gonna complete the U-turn onto the opposite side of the dual carriageway, okay? Because Zach's never done this before, I would suggest take it in, take your time. Okay. Do it at a slow speed, jogging, yes. walking speed, just have a good look at the junction, see how you feel. And that is pretty much it, okay? So that is the U-turn. I'm gonna come out here. You can just take it out. No branding. Hey, promo. No branding, <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, any questions? Nothing for now, it's okay. Cool. All right, when you're ready and it's safe, drive on. Zach receives a driver fault here for when he approaches the end of this road. The position that he puts the vehicle in is in the middle of the road. This blocks any traffic that may try to enter this side road. Have a look at the position from the pavement on the left. This gap is roughly two to three meters and it prevents any vehicles entering this side road. On this occasion, no other road users were affected and this driver fault gets recorded as an advisory driver fault. If you've noticed, I definitely have a pet peeve about lane discipline and road markings. And I like to keep people as professional as possible, giving them the best chance to pass the driving test. Here, as we approach the central reservation gap on our right, there's a very slight steer to the left. I'm not too sure if you can notice before turning right. It's important that we maintain lane discipline, which has been done from Zach. He did not step over the lane marking into the left, but it is important that we notice any banana technique of accidentally steering away from where we need to go, and this could be dangerous if there's a vehicle passing on the left. And I'd like you to pull over and stop on the left anywhere here is fine. Anyway, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, we're only going to be a second and we'll move on. Right, well done. Okay, now what I'm going to ask you to do, this is not on a route, but I want to show Zach a car park that is on test and we're going to go okay. do your manoeuvre when we get there, okay? okay? So in order to get there quicker, I'm going to ask you to do another U-turn, okay. all right? So there's another gap further down. You might be able to see the yellow bollards with the blue circle on top. That's a gap. There's more gaps further down, so okay. you can drive further if you want to. It's up to you. Any one of the gaps, you'll see that bollard, the yellow one with the blue circle, so you'll know a gap's coming. 
Okay. And then if it's safe, I'd just like you to do a U-turn again for me, please. Okay, that's right, fine. When you're ready. Scott, how do I know when it's safe to move away, especially on a road like this with fast moving traffic? Well, the idea is ask yourself if you would walk out. You can use this rule for junctions also. It's an excellent way to simplify such a complicated question. Would you walk out into the road seeing the vehicle? If the answer is no, wait until a safer opportunity when you would say that you would walk out. And if you see cows on the road, slow down. <laughs> Thank you very much, Zach. And just continue to follow the road ahead, please, and I'll give you directions from now on. Whether we're slowing down or speeding up, we must match our speed accordingly. And we've just passed from 40 miles an hour through a 30 mile an hour speed change sign. This means we must slow down before we reach the 30 sign in order to be at 30 miles an hour when we reach the 30 mile an hour speed change sign. On my driving test, I got a serious driver fault for use of speed because I was in a 20 mile an hour town centre approaching a 30 mile an hour speed change sign. I started to increase my speed, getting excited of the speed change and went up to 25 miles an hour before reaching the 30 mile an hour speed sign and received a serious driver fault for use of speed. After this life lesson, I started to help myself by looking ahead for signs and looking for poles because the signs are attached to poles. This triggered me to start to increase my skills of forward planning, therefore seeing speed changes, circles, order signs, warnings, triangles and rectangles with information like the crossroads that are coming up ahead. All of this information really helped me with my skills of forward planning. Therefore, my awareness and planning got a lot better. It's been a little bit busy around here at the moment. So for anybody that's doing a late test, I think that all the test centers at the moment are actually closing at 3 p.m. So that's about really? as late as it gets, but... Um, what time are they usually open till like? When well, summertime, it used to be like four or five, ah. sometimes a little bit later, because you got the daylight. Yes. Not at the moment, no. No, it comes and goes. I get worried sometimes. Just in case. Yeah, a little bump and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> but they can gone. Yeah, they're alright. They're quite sturdy. At the roundabout, follow the road ahead, please.
next roundabout, turn left, first exit. So what do you think about or feel about the area and where you'll be taking your test? Um, yeah, I, it, obviously the bit of driving I've done around here seems like quite a nice area to do a test in, if I'm honest, compared to where I was looking like West Wickham and, and places like that. Yeah, I think it's... Well, West Wickham's be. decent as well. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, I lived on the other side of London now. Really far, so. so. Yeah, but West Wickham's yeah. a decent test centre. Yeah, so now I'm happy with what it, how it's looking like and what sort of routes that, it, that we've been going on so it should fingers crossed mm. be all right yeah i find it quite relaxing around here yeah it's not as like built up it's still a bit rural isn't it so it's mm. not as apart from that guy not looking but <laughs> oh, yeah, i'm looking forward to it Okay, it's a little bit further down, there'll be a roundabout. Okay. Um, I'll wait a little bit longer until we get closer. At the roundabout, I'd like you to turn left, please. Okay, we're not too far now from the actual car park okay. and most likely we're going to finish the driving test there or the mock okay. test there okay because we've done our allotted time okay right so cool. yeah it does go very quick it feels a lot less um, when we do a real test for me it felt like half the amount of time it's supposed uh, to be okay. it just flew by it just flies by when you're concentrating i'm sure you just now just continue to follow the traffic sorry about the traffic it's been a bit busy today looks like someone i don't know his light's just broken but i saw a, a white light i thought it was someone trying <laughs> to reverse uh, earlier i had a lorry driving straight towards me really? i was imagining things something off a traffic cops yeah <laughs> yeah it was from portugal actually it's uh, a portuguese company so Maybe you got a little bit confused. 
Yeah, and I was watching traffic cops the other week and it's the one in the lorry drivers literally was, he got stopped because he tried to do a reverse on a on a junction to then go off the motorway. I think I've seen that. And they opened the door, the guys in his boxer shorts. <laughs> literally driving in his boxer shorts and socks. No top, no nothing. Wow. He must have been hot. Yeah. <laughs> his AC didn't work. Uh. Okay, um, at the traffic lights, wasn't too bad the traffic, um, we'll be turning left and then this is where the car park is, it's pretty much connected to this crossroads okay. here. So we turn left Yes. and when you turn left you should see a big P like that. Okay. And that's where we go into Start the car up. park, yeah. Okay. So it'll be a left and then you'll see the P and then we'll turn Straight right. Up into the car right, park, yeah. Okay. I'll give you directions again when we get closer to the traffic light, yeah? Definitely, yeah. Because um, it's a little bit awkward, but the examiners should hopefully give you good directions yeah. to help you get in there as well. I, I was, the one thing I was talking to you about yesterday, someone was at, you know that left turning before the roundabout? That one we went on and it was like left and then there was a left there and then the roundabout was literally on that left, the bare left, remember that? Oh, the bare left, yeah. I was yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. yes, I was like, oh my yeah. God, that was how the road was. I was, so, I was like, yeah. where is this going? So we had a road that was just before the roundabout, but it looked like it was almost connected. To the roundabout, that yeah. was it, yeah. We could call that a slip road. It's mm. quite common when you get big junction roundabouts, like dual carriage road, motorway, motorway roundabouts. So you have a slip road that just bypasses slip the roundabout. That's what we had. All right, so after you've done a left, nice and gentle, super slow. You see the P on the right? Yes. Turn right, please, into this car park here of the yellow box. Now the difficult part is, is someone coming out? Because if someone's coming out, okay. we might not be able to get in. Okay. It's clear, yeah? yeah? But you can see the width of the road. Yes, very short. So very if anyone's narrow. doing a driving test, just look into the road, okay, you know, as like you did, yeah, yeah, as you're going. Yeah, and just take it nice and slow, because someone might be coming around this yeah. bend as well. It's a blind bend, and here we are in the car park, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go down the far side, all the way down, and that's where there'll be lots of empty spaces, okay? okay? So you've done your forwards bay park before. <coughs> this would be a forwards bay park. Any bay on the left. Okay. Cool. cool, done. can see the line there, I know you're in. I'm not even going to bother opening the door. Okay. okay, when you're ready and it's safe, I'd like you to reverse out to the right, please. Reverse okay. out to the right. Okay, um, would you put it in park for me? We haven't forgot anything, that's everything that's done. So, just I've, um, reverse parking, yeah, we'll do that after. Later. Yeah, we've yeah, finished cool. the mock test now. So, I'd okay. like you to switch the engine off, please. That's the end of your mock test, Zach. Your okay. first mock test is so cheeky seen it i know he's looking to try and see if he's passed or failed oh, i like them flowers <laughs> oh, they're quite pretty, yeah, they're so pretty. <laughs> they look like weeds to me so <laughs> <laughs> right anyways uh, it's the end how do you feel it went i think okay the only one thing i'd say was that zebra crossing all right yeah that that's good thing. to bring that up so let's clarify that Nobody used the crossing. There was no pedestrians oh, okay. around, even in the, the vicinity. Yeah. Of okay. Um, so for that reason, you're not obstructing anybody. Okay. Right, Preferably, then. yes. Keep it clear, because if someone definitely. comes along, you're going to get him. Yeah, you're obstructing. Of course. It's an offence to obstruct the pedestrian yeah. crossings when pedestrians are using it. Yeah. Of course. All right. So what else? That's that, yeah. Yeah, I think it went. I think it went okay. My signaling. 
think I've got a bit much better with checking before I signal. In the mirrors? Yeah, on the yeah. mirrors. Good. And then, yeah, just the checking, obviously, mirrors mm -hmm. as much as possible when you mm -hmm. can sort of mm -hmm. thing. So. so I'm glad you said that. Definitely agree with you. Yeah. To the point where I made a mark for one mirror check for signalling. But can you see it says not included? Yeah. Can you see what I said there? Yeah. I'll look like a, a twat. twat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because Zach was so good that that one occasion, I think it was a left only lane at the roundabout. Yeah. He'd signalled and then I just saw you check your mirrors after the signal. So... You know what, for that one occasion and, and the fact that no one would be there because yep. you're in a left lane, there's no other traffic, it's not really a concern that there's traffic here so okay. you, that you'd need to know about it first. Before you I know? Did, yeah. So on that occasion, I thought, you know what, he's consistent with his mirrors, very good mirrors. You'll see that on the video. Very good job. Okay, well done because that's something that we wanted to look at, Definitely. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah no, it um, so excellent. All right, moving on. Any other questions or points or topics or tips or... Winning lottery numbers. That's it for now. No, <laughs> All no. right. Okay, cool. So, um, this that's the end of the test. I'm just going to say it. Congratulations, you passed. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, that's all right. So, um, there was a couple of marks. Okay. All right. So, two actually. Okay. okay. So, they're both similar. All right. Okay. So, it's when there's no markings on the road, when it's just kind of a blank canvas. Yes. When we have a blank canvas try to keep a little bit more on the left if you can okay. okay um so we had one for lane discipline this is at the beginning yeah uh you passed through two roundabouts where i was making the whole hoo-ha about not listening oh, to yes, the sat nav yes. and then it actually gave pretty decent <laughs> direction so anyways yeah um when we complete those two roundabouts it's super common the road marking is very faint, but there's yeah. still two lanes when you come off the ah, second okay, roundabout. Yes. And because of the curve, what usually happens, a lot of people will go over the extremely faint road marking. This council is doing an excellent job at the moment. <laughs> Brilliant, nice new road markings in certain yeah. areas. So hopefully that will get done at some Definitely. point. And then it will be more visible. And we just strayed over. Okay. okay, so there wasn't any vehicles next to you. We didn't go over a whole lot, but we just slightly went over the road marking. So I just put it down as your lane discipline, just okay. slightly went over and out into the other lane on the right. Okay, no one was affected, so that's an advisory driver form. Uh, the same is similar. Uh, this was when we went on to the dual carriageway. So you remember I asked you to park behind that silver car, oh, yes. grey car. Um, and then we went around it to join and go on, initially turn onto. in and onto the dual carriageway, which would be this part here. Okay. So what happened, and this was kind of nice. It's what I'm now calling the... Banana. Banana. <laughs> um, that might be the thumbnail. <laughs> um, so what happened is you, you kept out a little bit. Yes. And then kind of swerved in. That's why I'm calling it a banana. Because okay, you're kind of going out and in. That's decent because that's going to help you to get a kind of straighter car here. And allow a little bit more space for anyone that might turn in. Okay, yeah? yes. Yep. Um, that also allows you to have a little bit more gap from this horrible curb that we have there. That you want to avoid, you know, getting too close to. However, we weren't really positioned like this. No. We were more in the middle, which could, and I'm sure Mo's way too busy to be watching any of these videos still, but Mo, I actually gave him a serious fault because uh, he blocked, okay. but a car came along. So you, yeah, I get it. And yeah. they couldn't get in. Okay, yes. So definitely he's blocked the road, he's affected the traffic. Just a serious driver yeah. fault. Sorry, Mo. Um, so just keep as left as you can away from the curb but more there so the cars can come in yes yeah, so you're doing your best to try and keep your position left and allow room for any vehicles that might come, come in. in yeah okay nobody was affected so i put down as an advisory driver for for steering okay so it's all right the steering kind of going out and in to try and help yourself to give yourself a safe position yeah. when you're at that exit as long as we're not affecting anybody Anyone mirror else. checks which we're doing then it's all good you do the banana yep. otherwise keep it straight do your best to avoid hitting the curb, which is very difficult if you stay straight, but yeah. If I am going to do the banana, just come in a bit more on the left. 
Yeah, just avoid blocking the road if okay. someone comes in. Um, that is it. So, wow, oh. that was quick and easy, wasn't <laughs> it? All right. Um, any questions or anything that's on your mind before we finish up? No, we're good. Just no? thanks, Scott. All right. Yeah, well, thank you, Zach. Thank yeah. you. I mean, you couldn't get much better than that. I don't think I've ever had two minor thoughts on any of my videos. <laughs> so, congrats. I was kind of hoping I'm halfway... I, I thought... That... <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, I thought it was... Um, almost going to be a clean sheet that means no marks oh, okay. or whatsoever i mean i was tempted to kind of avoid giving you these to try yeah. and make it look like a clean <laughs> sheet but i thought all right yeah. come on let's talk about a little Definitely. bit of things at the end give you some feedback of course thank you yeah and that's it um so i've been scott this has been zach the genius and um <laughs> stay safe stay tuned and we'll see you next time cheers deuce